Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. We have a very special guest. Let me introduce her in just a moment. Meanwhile, do know that the phone lines are open. You can call us at 559-656-0317. You can also text that number. You can send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. And of course, to add to our text list, go ahead and shoot us a text saying anything, but be nice, to 5674-CARL. It's 567-367-5275. Without any further ado, let me introduce our special guest today. This is Amy Bach. She is the executive director of United Policyholders. She has been a professional insurance consumer advocate since 1985, you know, when we were all in in diapers, right? She co-founded United Policyholders in 1991, serves as the the organization's executive director and primary spokesperson, shaping and overseeing the roadmap to recovery, roadmap to preparedness, and advocacy and action programs. She is as involved in the insurance world as can possibly be. Amy, welcome, and thank you so much for being here today. Uh, It's a pleasure to be with you, Carl. There is no shortage of insurance news, as always, so I want to just jump right into it with you. Uh, I want to talk primarily about what consumers are feeling and seeing the most. And I know that you are in the you are right in the thick of this. You're the one that's getting these phone calls. You're the one that has these meetings. You are the one in the middle of it all. So let's start out. Tell us where are we today in California with the insurance marketplace? Um, we are in an unprecedented period of time um, from people like me who've been um, in this sphere for three get three decades or more um, agents who've been selling insurance their whole careers uh, everybody uses the same word <laughs> never seen anything like this it's unprecedented so there are lots of lo- lots of blame to be going around right everybody blames somebody else and nobody blames I shouldn't say that everybody blames somebody. Right. It has to be somebody's fault that we're in this position. And a lot of times we're hearing different people being blamed. Do you have any particular one? This is the reason we're in this situation or is it much more nuanced than that? Tell tell us a little bit about this so people can feel more educated and not just hearing the the 30 second sound bites about who created this mess. Yeah, there's no one person to blame for this, in my opinion. Um, it's a, uh, really an unfortunate kind of perfect storm of a lot of different, different phenomena happening simultaneously. Um, and, and then, but then, you know, the underlying issue for me as a consumer advocate is that this is the first time, uh, that I can say, and I've been a consumer advocate for many, many years, uh, that the there's a lot of question whether this private insurance system as we've known it is really going to continue to be viable in an era where climate change is a reality but technology has really rushed in to make the risks that insurers were taking uh for for as long as we can remember look unprofitable to them to a degree where it's really unclear to me whether we're going to be able to return to the competitive, affordable property insurance market as we knew it. And so really what what that kind of leads me to think is like, you know, we have said over the years, I'm a lawyer and, you know, there have been cases that talk about insurers as quasi fiduciaries or, um, you know, that they that they're a little bit like a utility. Right. But we don't we don't treat them that way. We don't. We regulate them for if sure. If I can just put a pin in that, can you explain yeah. what a fiduciary is and what that means being a regu- uh, being a utility? I, I understand, but I want everyone to be on the same page with us. Right, right. So it's a fiduciary is I'm legally obligated to to look out for your fi- financial interests as well as my own. So like there are cases that say an insurance company has to put its financial interests on a par on a level with the interests of its customers. They can't put their own financial interests above. Now that has to do with paying claims. That is 
in this in the context of somebody has had a loss, they make a claim, um, they want the insurer to pay, and when the court is looking at did the insurer uphold their obligations or not, they're going to look at that concept. In this context, what it what I'm talking about is really more um, a utility has to serve everyone. A utility, a, pub, a power, the power company. They can't say, oh, I'm not going to serve, uh, provide you with electricity. I don't like you. You know, they have to give you electricity as long as you pay what they're charging, right? Uh, we don't have that with insurers, right? We have relied on competition to serve all customers, and it's not working anymore. Um, and and I, as much as we may try to try to fix things so that it it works again, I have some deep concerns over whether will be able to really look to private insurance companies as we have to serve everyone because they're basically are saying, hey, we're not, we can't do that. So right now we're seeing a situation where it's it's next to impossible to get an insurance proposal or, or policy from insurance companies. And we're talking specifically in California, but what are we seeing countrywide as far as this level of uh, carriers not having the ability, appetite, desire, call it whatever you want, to be writing policies. Carl, it's a virus <laughs> that is spreading across the United States. Florida got it first. Then we got it. Now Colorado's getting it. But when I go to the conferences of the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, and I and I sit in on meetings, and I have conversations with regulators, Iowa, Pennsylvania, Georgia, I can't even think of a state that hasn't said we're, our market just doesn't look the, like it did in the past. The, you know, the, 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 the people are getting dropped. Um, the carriers are pulling back on their underwriting. Um, and that's why I believe it isn't just climate change. It isn't just wildfires. It isn't just hurricanes. It's something deeper. So what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about what you see as being more of the, the the larger picture. What are some of these other factors? I know technology is one of them. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, let's talk a little bit about, again, how this is affecting everybody everywhere. I like the virus analogy, although it's a horrible way to put it. But it, it, it is certainly apropos to the way we're seeing this. And I think it's also important that everybody realizes that this is not just a California thing. Everyone loves to everybody loves California. Right. But uh, this is not something that we created and it's not something that we're the only ones suffering from. So let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Again, this is Insurance Hour. I'm Carl Sussman with our special guest from United Policyholders, Amy Bach. We will be back in a flash. Hang in there. Let's talk about earthquakes for a minute. Look, we know we live in earthquake country here in California. Powerful, devastating earthquakes have happened here before, and science says that they will happen again. They can't tell us exactly when. They can just tell us that it is going to happen. Count on it. Prepare for it. Did you know that earthquakes are not covered by your homeowner's insurance policy? You need a separate policy to give you the peace of mind that you will be able to recover without getting financially wiped out the next time we get hit with a big one. There is a great company here in California that will provide you with earthquake coverage you need at a price you can afford. That company is GeoVera. I have a policy through GeoVera. I really like how easy it is to choose from all of their great coverage options, backed by the financial strength that lets me know that they will be here for me when I need them the most. Go to getquake.com forward slash insurance hour to learn more. That's getquake.com slash insurance hour. Make sure you're ready for the day when the ground shakes again. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, the phone lines are still open, 559-656-0317. You can call us or text at that number or email your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. Join our text list. You can send a text of any kind to 567 for carl That's 567-367-5275. We are here with our special guest from United Policyholders, Amy Bach. Amy, thank you again for being here. Before the break, we were talking about how California is not on its own little island here with the issues facing insurance carriers and availability. Tell us a little bit about how you see this having started, continued, spread, and what we might be looking to have happen in the near future. 
So I think that um, when we look at when um, we started seeing non-renewals, uh, just in California, patterns of people getting dropped by their by their insurers and not being able to find a competitor, right? Because that that's what that's sort of the new. That's the that's the unprecedented part, right? Pre unprecedented part is like in the past, you know, we saw we've always had these periods in California where insurers' appetites were not as hardy for, um, you know, for insuring homes in certain areas, especially after wildfires, right? Um, but but competition always filled the void, right? You know, one carrier would drop. A, a, a household, and then that household would able would be able to get coverage through one of the, a competitor, right? When that stopped happening, um, it, you know, we we initially we thought, yeah, this is definitely climate change. This is this is um, you know, insurance executives, C suite executives, going, wow, we better get ahead of this thing. This is going to cost us some money. Um, and then and then and then we had a series of horrible record breaking wildfires right right after right after the, the it was revealed that there were 120 million dead trees along the spine of the sierras which which scientists attribute to climate change induced drought making it harder for the trees to fight off these invasive beetles that was the climate change news item right that seemed to trigger the non renewals and then suddenly, then then we had in succession Atlas Tubbs fires in in Santa Rosa, affluent you know high value homes went down, regular value homes went down, seven thousand structures record breaking, followed by the campfire you know eighteen thousand structures again break, breaking another record, Thomas Fire in Ventura, and then Woolsey you know Malibu my God you know big, big, big whopper bills that came in to the insurers um, from those areas. So that compounded. Um, and then we had the advent of risk scoring, you know, that just like you can see, you know, what your credit score has an outsized impact on the on the interest rates that you'll be offered on, whether you'll be offered a credit card or not, what kind of interest rate you'll be offered, um, and what kind of loan terms you can get. Credit score, very, very important. Now, insurance score, very, very important. Then we had the man drones phenomenon of aerial images and data mining. And all of these, these, these are the factors that have come together to bring us to where we are now and to interfere with the normal forces of competition. And on top of that, Carl, as you know, insurers have never lived on premiums alone, right? They've always, they take the premiums that, that they collect they invest them. And when the, when the stock market is good and they're making good returns on their investments, then life is good for them. Over the last few years, we have had a lot of fluctuations in the stock market. We've had inflation. Uh, we've had investor jitters. And all of that, I think, is also in the mix here to make to reduce insurers' appetites for insuring, and not just homes, but businesses. I mean, you know, I sit down with agents that, that insure wineries and they cannot find coverage and they're flying. I thought you were going to say they can't find the front door because, you know, they're insuring wineries and they're not sure where they are. But I, 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 yours, is a, yours is a better way of putting it. I mean, and, and that, that's those, every time I would hear something like that, it would be another alarm going off. Like, what? You know, first we thought, okay, climate change, we'll deal with that. They can charge more, right? And then... And then, and people will understand that, right? But then it's going to be a question of how much more. But then it was like, well, it's not that simple. You know, your organization does a lot to help consumers and they, they reach out to you for, for questions and for advice and for help. Tell us what, what are those types of calls and reach outs for assistance looking like these days? Um, well, for one thing, the premium quotes people are getting are just jaw dropping, you know, I mean, I, I had said years ago, you know, the days of paying under a thousand dollars a year for your home insurances are over. Like that's we got to move past that. We're not talking about a thousand dollars going up to two thousand. We're talking about a thousand dollars going up to six thousand or ten thousand, depending on where you live. Um, so we're we're you know we're so the number one complaint, of course, is I can't afford this. I cannot. I don't know what to do here. I and then the number two is. 
my only choice seems to be the fair plan and I hear this and I hear that. So like we're quelling rumors about the fair plan, you know, like they're going to run out of money. You know, I don't think that they're going to run out of money. You know, the, 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 I mean, not anytime soon. <laughs> um, there's a legitimate concern about it, um, but it's not a reason not to buy a policy through them. Right. Um, so those are the two. And then the third most common is I did the things that the insurance company asked me to do. And I still got dropped and I still can't get covered. So where's the fairness in that? Those are all great points. And I know we've talked about that in, in the past as well. As as far as those rates going up, do you find that most people are seeing those rate changes from the same company or is it they were paying one premium with one company, they were non-renewed and all they could find was something that was, you know, again, from a thousand or two to six, eight or 10,000? You know, well, we look for good news wherever we can find it. Um, and so, you know, there definitely are some of the traditional brand names where they are renewing and it's not, you know, a triple, it's maybe a double of the premium. Um, you know, the, the, as far as though the, the new entrance, the, the, you know, the bamboos, the kins, the, you know, um, the, the North light, the, you know, um, all over the map. In terms of pricing. All right. I want to talk a little bit more about what some of the advice is that you're you're giving to people when they reach out to you. We're going to take another quick break. And also, I want to make sure everyone knows we will definitely talk about the California Fair Plan. I promise. Uh, I know that that is on a lot of people's minds and their financial solvency and everything surrounding that. So I don't want people to think that you mentioned it and we're going to just pretend it wasn't said. We're definitely going to talk about the California Fair Plan. So let's take another quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue the conversation with Amy Bach. This is, again, Insurance Hour. I'm your host, Carl Sussman. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we will be here to answer more questions for you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour, and I'm your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. If you've missed any of this show so far, jump online and look us up because you want to get all this information. We have special guest Amy Bach, but I want to, again, be sure you realize that what you're hearing now is just a sample. If you've missed any, jump online, search for Insurance Hour. You can find us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, iHeartMedia, pretty much everywhere. Again, the phone lines are open if you have questions for myself or for Amy. 559-656-0317. You can call or text that number to get on our text list for important insurance updates. Go ahead and shoot us a text to 567 for carl It's F-O-R-K-A-R-L. 567-367-5275. Uh, okay, before the break, Amy and I were talking about questions that she gets from uh, consumers that are having issues with insurance. Amy, uh, you gave us three examples of the of the common questions you get. What type of advice are you giving people? Let's start with the first one. What are you telling them when they're saying, I was paying 2000 and now either the only carrier that wants to take me wants to charge 8000 or or the carrier went that I have doubled in price? So we give the... We give some of the traditional tips, which are bundle your, your car with your home, um, and, and that may help. Um, raise your deductible. Um, that's a big one. Don't file small claims. Um, find a really good agent or broker. That's, a, that's, become, that's kind of elevated we went right up to the top of our list because in this tough market, it, 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 you know, who you know is always going to be a rule in, in, our, in our world, but 
um, working with an agent um, or broker that has uh, that is proactive in this challenging market that isn't um, you know drowning their sorrows in the local tavern um, or just telling you you know oh gonna put you with the fair plan like right out of the box without really shopping that's not the kind of person you want like you want somebody that's gonna um, that's gonna really beat the bushes for you and may have these relationships with some of the newer companies that um, that you might might want to go with so so raise your deductible d um, bundle work with a good a professional and then this is the hardest one trim non-essential coverages as a last resort right now here's my organization has spent 30 years trying to prevent people from having um, being underinsured on their dwelling so we've had to really shift our messaging right we would always harp on in our preparedness presentations and our publications and our answers to consumers make sure you get that coverage a right get your dwelling number right right so that we you're not in that in that two-thirds of people who lose a home in a wildfire and find they didn't have as, enough coverage to put their house back. We can't really even talk about that that much right now. I mean, we, we will mention it. We will say it's still important to try to get that number right. But we recognize that for a lot of households now, they don't have that luxury of having the full coverage. They've got to trim. So where can you trim? Contents. Stuff is stuff. You know, um, a lot of policies, you know, give you more contents coverage than you really need. Um, other structures, uh, we say if you don't have outbuildings and garages, see if you can get stop paying for that. Now, we rec so those are kind of the two places where, where people can trim, where we feel like it won't hurt you too much um, if you have a claim. Now, you know, you know, you're, you're not only are you an expert in this field and one of our very important sources of information from the, from the field, um, a lot of policies have these automatic percentages. So they, there's some carriers, they won't let you reduce other structures or reduce contents below a certain amount because it's just a, that's how, that's their formula. Um, but those are the main points that we give people to try to bring the policy down. You know, we, we, whenever people say, oh, I, you know, I've been told the fair plan is my only option, we always try to remind them that Talk to one other agent because it is possible that that agent didn't want to lose your business and that was the only option they could find for you. And so rather than send you down the street to somebody else who might be able to help help you, they just put you in the fair plan. That would be, typically that would be your captive agent. That would be your your farmer's agent, your state farm, your all state. They don't want to lose you. They don't have anything to sell you other than the fair plan. So they might throw you in there. So we try to encourage consumers to at least get, you know, talk to at least two people. I know that probably hurts you as an agent, um, maybe to hear, uh, but you're not one of those agents. You're not going to throw somebody in the fair plan because you don't have an option. If you put somebody in the fair plan, it's because, because you did that diligent search and there was nothing else for them. Independent agents definitely are, are finding their footing because agencies, again, like you said, like, like ours, it's all about reaching out to every carrier that we possibly can find and see what are they taking, what is their appetite, who can we fit there that is looking to get coverage. But you're right, not all agencies have that option, either contractually or simply just because their business isn't designed that way. Because a lot of these carriers now, they're being very particular and they want to be sure that they're getting a particular type of business. So a lot there's a lot of trust that goes into that. Uh, your second point was what to do uh, if people are actually doing this work and then they're still not getting renewed. What are you telling people under those circumstances? So uh, we are dialoguing with insurers um, as much as we can to try to help them gain confidence that if somebody has taken steps to make it less likely that their home's gonna burn, even if they haven't done every single thing on the IBHS or the Safer From Wildfires list. Those are the two official standards for what you can do to make it less likely that your home is going to burn. If you, that, that we've been dialoguing with insurers to say, hey, you know, um, help, the, help you, know, you should recognize these things, you know, by, um, and, and we are getting a little, I mean, that's sort of the, the, the Department of Insurance will call that like the bully pulpit. We don't have the bully pulpit even. We have the, do this because we'll we'll praise you publicly and that will make you look good in the media, you know, and that will help, you know, clear your black eye that you have. 
Um, I mean, you know, look, we, United Policyholders, helped get those standards into place. We pushed for the, the regulations that require insurers to give you a break. Um, you know, if you do mitigation, we are working very hard to help build those channels of information on completed mitigation so that insurers actually know what what people are doing, not just in their individual homes, but in their communities. Um, and, and all these things are sort of a work in progress, right? And, and But again, a, an agent like you who actually knows how to fill out the paperwork to help your clients get those discounts, again, that's just so valuable. And, you know, that's another thing we tell people is, look, give your insurance company invoices, give them completed proof. But we know, um, you know, that in the real world where we live, um, insurers are still skeptical about incremental risk reduction steps. They, they, they want to see you wave that certificate. I got this piece of paper from the Institute for Home and Business Safety that says I'm a wildfire prepared home. That's that's the shortcut to getting your discount. It's much harder to get that piece of paper than than we would like it. Than to just be. send it, and especially it's a hot, lot harder than just sending in a receipt. Let's take a quick break. We come back. And we'll talk about the third thing that, that you keep hearing from everybody and what your recommendation is to for them as well. Again, Insurance Hour, and I am Carl Sussman with special guest Amy Bach. Have you been dropped by your insurance agency or seen your premiums skyrocket? Sussman Insurance is here to help. We are a family-owned and operated insurance agency that's been serving our community for two generations. At Sussman Insurance, we know how stressful it can be to find the right coverage, especially when prices go up or you're left without insurance. That's why we're committed to finding you competitive rates, whether it's for fire, home, earthquake, flood, auto insurance, you name it. We've got you covered. Give us a call or send a text to 310-820-5200 or visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com. Plus, stay updated on all things insurance by joining our text group. Just text 567-4CARL with a K. That's 567-367-5275 to get the latest updates straight to your phone. Sussman Insurance, your family's insurance solution. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Welcome back. Today with our special guest from United Policyholders, this is Amy Bach. We have been chatting about all things insurance. I know your favorite thing in mind. Remember, if you've missed any part of the show, lots of important information here. Jump online, search for Insurance Hour. It's on YouTube. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's on iHeart Media. Tune in, you name it. Just find us and find this episode because there's a lot of good information that will help you with your insurance. Amy, before the break, we were talking about the top three things that you're asked as a consumer advocate. And we're down to the final one. And I believe it's one that we were going to talk about uh, in some to some in some detail as well. Why don't you go ahead and talk, uh, get us started on that? So the fair plan, people ask us, um, you know, what is it safe? Is it what is it? And, you know, is it a government program? Is it um, are they you know going to run out of money? Um, you know, what, is it a one size fits all and what's the story with this thing, right? And some of these questions are familiar because we were around when the California Earthquake Authority was formed and there were a lot of similar questions at that time when we had the Northwoods earthquake and insurers kind of en masse said, we can't, we don't want to cover earthquake damage anymore. And so the state stepped in and created this this plan. Well, the FAIR plan is similar. It's not the same, but it's got some similarities. You know, we tell insurers, if you want to do business in this state, you want to sell insurance at all. If you are a certain kind of insurer, you must participate in the FAIR plan. So it, but it is a private association. It is a, it is a, and what the insurers will call it an involuntary association is what they call it. Right. Um, and, and, a, and it is a, uh, so it's run by private insurers. It's administered by private insurers. Really, the state has very limited, um, a, a very limited role in how it works. So when, and when the CEA was first formed, the Earthquake Authority, one of the first questions people had is, if I buy insurance through this entity, how can I be sure 
that if there's a big disaster, I'm going to get, and I am inf- impacted, my claim is going to get paid. So that, that first question of the, fi- of the financial strength of the FAIR plan is, is right there in front of people, um, you know, top of mind. I think what I want to touch on some more, because I know it always raises eyebrows when I say what you've just said, which is the FAIR plan is run by insurance companies. Right. Can you give us a little bit more on how that works and how uh, you call it the involuntary uh, association or uh, how, how, does that, how does that actually work in practice? So the FAIR plan is an association of the all the admitted, that means fully licensed, fully regulated insurance companies in the state. So it's a, as a condition for doing business here, you must participate. And your participation means that you have to share in the assets and liabilities of the association. So in a, in a percentage that matches your market share. So if I'm State Farm and I have a fifth of the market share in the state, I've got a big role in the fair plan. So I, not just in terms of servicing policies, you know, sending out the bills, um, keeping the accounts, but if a claim comes in, the liabilities right now um, are covered by all the participating insurers, again, relating to their market share. The the tricky part for, well, there's a lot of tricky parts here. Um, one is, the, we've got to have admitted insurers participating in the fair plan, right? Um, in order for there to be a fair plan. It's their money in the pot. It's your money, the premiums you paid go into the fair plan, but then they manage that money just like a regular insurance company, right? But it's a team effort. Governing board, I don't even know who's on it. It's opaque. They don't, they're, they're not subject to open meetings laws. So we don't know a lot about their operations. They are run by Victoria Roach, but really we, we, the public don't know a whole lot other than this market share formula for the participation. And if they run out of money, the old rule was that all the participating insurers would have to kick in. They would get assessed for the for the shortfall, let's say there's a huge wildfire and the fair plan has, let's say, I don't know, 5,000 claims that come in at once. Something Ooh, like I just that. got the chills, even even talking about it. But OK, go right. ahead. Um, and they and if they didn't have enough money to pay all those claims under the old rule, every insurer that participates would have had to kick in to cover that shortfall right and again it would be this well i've got the i've I've got a fifth so i gotta kick in a fifth right basically a fifth Uh, after the fair plan ran out of funds after the fair plan ran out of funds now new rule that insurance commissioner lara negotiated recently with the fair plan it's kind of a big deal it hasn't really gotten a whole lot of publicity now instead of all those private participating insurers being on the hook for the full amount of that shortfall after the fair plan has has paid out everything that it has um, in in reserves is going to be 50 50 the the insurers carry 50 and we the policyholders are going to carry 50. now less your re- you got the chills your your viewers your listeners this is a very what if right this is just what if this is not like a, so it's really, you know, you, a question of of where you fall on the optimism or pessimism spectrum. Is this a looming crisis? You know, what would this mean for us as policyholders to pay 50% of the assessments if the fair plan doesn't have enough money to meet their obligations after a big cat? Um, very much a what if scenario. And I do not know the answer to that question. So if I'm, if I'm getting, getting the sliver of, potential it's if there's a large enough some event that the fair plan first runs out of money second has to assess all of the insurance carriers based on their market share and then of that assessment if there's one they're allowed to then pass on half of what their individual assessment as a carrier was to policyholders of the fair plan or policyholders 
of their policies all, that are all not fair plan. Holders, all policyholders. All, all policyholders. All policyholders. Yeah. So I mean, we're really in the weeds here, Carl. You know, I I that's a problem because we we work together. We're you know, both of us are super wonks here. For the regular person. They don't need to be worrying about that right now, in my opinion. But I agree. That's why I'm saying I'm trying to see it's such a small sliver. This is not something that we that's really even anticipated, to be frank. But it's it's like you said, it, it is kind of a big deal that, that it happened. Let's take another quick break. And I want to talk some more about the fair plan. And let's get a little into the weeds on the finances because I have their latest numbers handy. Insurance Hour, your host, me, Carl Sussman, and special guest, Amy Bach. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Greg. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this, something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I'm your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. We are with our special guest, Amy Bach from United Policyholders. Some amazing information you do not want to miss. Make sure you stay with us now. And if you've missed any of this, jump online, search for Insurance Hour, grab this episode because there is a ton of important information here. Phone lines are open 559-656-0317. Call or text that number. You can email your questions in anytime to questions at insurancehour.com. And of course, join our text group if you want to get important insurance-related updates. Send us a text to 567 for carl It's 567-367-5275. All right, Amy, we're into the fair plan weeds now, no pun intended. And the, the, the big question people have is, do they have money and will they be there? And I think what we'll answer that question as best we can, but I think it's important we point this out. The fair pl- So an insurance carrier looks at a home and says, no, I don't want to write that because it's too high of a brush risk. So they go to the fair plan, but the insurance carriers are actually going to be paying for that risk based on their market share anyway. So whether they're getting a policy from a carrier or from the fair plan, at the end of the day, the money is coming to some extent from the insurance carriers. Is that a fair way to represent it? Yes, absolutely. The fair plan is as financially strong as all the participating insurers in in the program. Okay, that's 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 right. And so the latest numbers that I have show that the current exposure, meaning if every policy that the entire fair plan has had a total loss, so every policy on their entire book had a loss, they would have about $280 billion in total exposures. And right now, currently, in their coffers, in their reserves, in their, in their bank, they have about $2.8 billion. So people look at that, and of course, they panic. They say, well, that's a big shortfall. So explain why that's not, so, as the, that the numbers don't really speak to the reality based on what's being written with Fair Plan and, and the money and the carriers that are backing them. Well, the most important reason is that not everybody's going to lose their homes at once. I mean, it, even the worst, you know, conflagration that we've had in this state, the campfire, I mean, the most number of homes that went down was 18,000, right? So so that's number one. You know, you're not going to see everybody making a claim at once. Number two is you, you're you not going to see people ever make, making total loss claims either, right? So, um, and there's a lot that the fair plan doesn't cover. Right? They don't cover water. They don't cover wind. So um, just so not that's just not a scenario that's going to play out. That every single insured would make a claim at the same time. There's also the reality that we we actually are getting much better at preventing big conflagrations here, like the fires that just were um, just hit down in SoCal. 
they one of them stopped at a of what's called a fire break, which is an area that the fire department has cleared of a public on on like you know forested land. It's stu- that that kind of strategy is working. We're putting so much more money into fire suppression early resources, helicopters, and risk reduction. So I just I don't want to. I never want to be, um, I, you know, I'm not Alfred E. Newman here saying, what me worry, right? It's Oh, you're aging us with that reference. Yeah, I know. Alfred That's E. Right. Newman. I know. God. <laughs> oh, my God. Mad, mad. If Newman. you know who that is, please send me an email so I don't, so Amy and I don't feel so bad. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, my point is, like, I can't make light of this. This is people's, fine, you know, people's homes are their biggest assets. And also, we're not just talking about homes. We're talking about businesses. So I never want to be cavalier about the possibility that somebody's going to lose everything and come up short, right? Not not have a safety net, right? So, um, you know, I don't, I, but I just, I don't, it's a doomsday scenario that's not going to come to pass. I understand. I, I think that it's important that, everyone realizes that these exposures have always existed. We've just never talked about them. Right. And and, and now because everyone is so involved and and there's, and you'll get a headline, you'll see something and you think, oh my gosh. And then you stop thinking about it. And then there'll be another headline and oh my gosh. And you stop thinking about it. Uh, At the end of the day, the insurance department of insurance is around their primary focus. I could probably say is to be sure that there are, dollars around to pay for claims in some form or another when they happen. And if, if I take that global um, view on it, should people be concerned? Yes, I think. Be, and, 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 you know, you probably are not going to like this answer, but like, you know, because of where we started in this conversation, we don't, we don't treat insurance companies like utilities. We treat them like not entirely like free market capitalist actors, um, but we, you know, by and large, they, they, well, they definitely get to pick and choose which customers they're going to serve. And if we're going to keep that going, and then we do have the commissioner's deal that if, um, that now that insurers in California are allowed to use these catastrophe models and setting their rates as, and instead of the way we had been doing it, which is only basing their rates on historical facts of what actually happened, um, now that insurers have gotten that, which they were lobbying for for many years, um, you know they are in turn have committed to write more homes in these distressed areas. Um, short of that, we're still not not telling insurers that they have to sell insurance to anybody they don't want to. And with that said, it feels like we're leaving ourselves no option but to create a new publicly supported disastrous, you know, insurance program. It feels like if we don't want to to tell insurers they must serve, they must take all comers, which is what we did with the Affordable Care Act, right? Somebody's got a medical condition. It's not an if they're going to have a claim. It's a when, right? We told health insurers, sorry, you're going to have to adjust your business model to provide some coverage for those people, even though you know they're going to make a claim. We either go that route with property insurance and we say to insurers, you're going to have to take some of the bad with the good, which is what the fair plan is. That's exactly what it is, right? You have to take a little of the risks you don't want with the ones you do in order to write the ones you do. Um, If we can keep that formula going, then we may not need a public option um, here. But I don't, I, I just don't see, you know, with, with the, you know, you said with the numbers of the fair plan, you know, those, those numbers have always, th- that amount of risk has always been there, right? It's like, we just didn't maybe see it that way. We didn't look at those numbers this way. It's similar to the condition of people's homes and businesses, right? People have always had propane tanks too close to their wood piles and pine needles in their gutters and tree limbs touching and wooden fences touching their homes and 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 galvanized plumbing and knob and tube wiring and and roofs that needed to be replaced that's and yet insurers were still covering those properties right and and so what they didn't know arguably wasn't hurting them now they'll say well well we're changing that i follow you listen we've got one more segment when we come back let's talk about what consumers can do 
based on a lot of these guidelines that you've helped to put forward to make their home less likely to burn and therefore more attractive to insurers. We'll do that right after the break. Insurance Hour, and I'm Carl Sussman with special guest Amy Buck. Are you feeling lost in the search for the right insurance? Making call after call, only to find no one willing to go that extra mile for you? At Sussman Insurance Agency, we understand that frustration, and we're here to change your experience. Where others see obstacles, we see opportunities. While many might shy away from jumping through hoops, at Sussman Insurance Agency, we are prepared to leap. Looking under every rock, exploring every avenue, that's not just what we do, it's who we are. Our dedicated team doesn't just offer policies, we provide solutions. Solutions born from persistence, expertise, and a genuine commitment to finding you the best coverage possible. We don't just meet expectations, we surpass them. If you're tired of hearing no or it's not possible, it's time to turn to a team that believes in yes and let's make it happen. Don't settle for less. Reach out to Sussman Insurance Agency at 877-411-5200. Visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com or email sales at sussmaninsurance.com. Let's uncover the insurance solutions you deserve. Sussman Insurance Agency, going the extra mile every time. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I'm your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. With our special guest today, Amy Bach from United Policyholders, I'm going to ignore all of the housekeeping so we have as much time as we can for this segment. Amy, we're going to talk about what people can do to make their home less likely to burn and therefore more likely to have the option to get an insurance policy. Tell us, based on all of these guidelines, all of these groups you've been on and and the success that you're seeing, what are some things people can do? A uh, clear brush from around your home. No limbs touching the home. Um, have a class A roof. No, no wooden shingles. Um, cl- keep your gutters clear. Put mesh, uh, fine mesh screens over all the openings. So if you have attic vents, you cover those with with um, with mesh. Um, Making sure there's uh, six inches of clearance between the the ground and the beginning of your siding. Um, if you have wood siding, change it out for non-combustible hardy board, asphalt shingles. Um, changing out windows to put in dual pane. Um, and those are the main ones. And then um, there's some other boxing your eaves is, is on the Safer from Wildfires list. But I think, unfortunately, um, even with that long list, oh, and, and you know, don't have a, a wooden structure, a wooden fence, ha- touch your home, like put a, put a metal gate between your, where it touches your house and, the, and a wood fence. Um, the reality is you got to do all those things and your neighbors have to do them too. Now, how is that going to work? You, you, you mentioned a few of these organizations, not organizations, um, plans, the Safer from Wildfire right. and, and, and one other one. And where can people get information about those things, both on the individual and on the community level? Um, at, our website is a great place to start. It's called, um, so it's it's um, a RAP Resource Center. So it's www.uphelp.org backslash WRAP. And that stands for Wildfire Risk uh, Reduction and Asset Protection. That's our initiative to make it as easy as possible for homes and businesses all over the state to take these steps. So you'll find, you can go to, you go, we have a map, you click on your county, you can see what the rules are, what the programs are, who might be giving away money in your county, um, and what you can do um, and what your neighbors can do. So they can get that information there. And what currently exists that is being recognized uh, universally as a set of guidelines for things that might generate discounts, for example, with the California Fair Plan. Sure. So um, the Fair Plan is following. Um, there, so there are these two sets. They're almost identical. Safer from Wildfires was developed by Cal Fire and the Department of Insurance. The uh, the um, Wildfire Prepared Home Standards were developed by the Institute for Home and Business Safety, that's funded by insurance companies. So they they did the work with scientists and testing. They came up with kind of very similar that list I just gave you. Um, there's two levels with IBHS. There's base and plus. Um, you know because insurance companies fund IBHS, they support IBHS, and because it's a all or nothing approach. You got to do everything on the list or you don't get the reward. Insurance companies have been a lot more enthusiastic about rewarding people who have that IBHS certificate. 
The FAIR plan, though, has agreed that the, that they will also accept the safer from your compliance with safer from wildfires, and the fact that your if your home is a firewise community, that really makes a big difference with the FAIR plan. Tell so, us about the the firewise community. I think that's one that that's that that slipped under our radar today. Yeah. So there are two um, two labels on a community that that say this community has taken steps to reduce the the potential for destructive wildfires, right? One is you can be a firewise community. It's an application. You do it through NHPA, um, National Home Protection Association, something like that. Online, it's not hard. You fill it out. I think there's a small fee and you get, and you have to show pretty low threshold actually of things that you're doing in your community. And then another thing you can do is have fire safe councils in your community. And again, these are just ways of showing insurance companies that our community is taking this seriously. We understand we have risk. We're doing our part. Now, please, insurance companies, do your part and reward us. And with FireWise communities, do you have an idea of how many communities have currently have that designation? I should. It's... I think it's it's w- well over a thousand, um, I believe, in California, um, growing fast. And I so, think- where sh- where can people go? Because I know we get asked this a lot as well. Is where can I get information? How many people in my community? How big does it have to be? Where can people get details on the the on those communities and that certification? Again, we tried to build our wrap resource on center to make it easy. So we have links to how do you, how does your community get to be firewise and how can I form a fire safe council? So there are links in that wrap resource center in your county for getting that information. Terrific. And we'll put links to all of that in, in show notes so people can, can link to it directly from, from this, uh, from this episode. Amy, there's so much you and I could go on indefinitely. And the truth is you and I pretty much do go on <laughs> indefinitely <laughs> when we talk about this stuff. We have very exciting conversations, Please but do. tell me in the last couple of minutes we've got together here today, what should people expect in the short term, let's say in the next three months, four months, and what should they expect in the next six to eight months? So um, the the California Insurance Commissioner, and I'm sure you've been talking about this on other insurance hours, his sustainable insurance strategy is a set of uh, initiatives that he crafted in dialoguing with insurance companies, Cal Fire, other realtors, other stakeholders throughout the state. He has publicly stated several times now that he expects to see the market start to rebound in the new year. And by rebound, he means more competition, more options, more availability. The bigger question for your listeners, your viewers, is what about affordability? Okay, I I believe you that we're going to see more availability. I do believe that. What I think the big question for all of us is what's going to happen to my premiums, right? Can I you know, for the person who's now in the $12,000 a, a year um, range, can they expect to come back down to earth and be paying more like 5000 Right. And those right. are questions we just don't know the answers to. Um, but we, as you know, are working arm in arm to try to make that answer be yes, your rate will come down. I, I am going to remain cautiously optimistic because I think that it's time for sure. I think that competition, hopefully... We, I mean, we know what competition does. We just have to hope that enough carriers do come back with these new guidelines to create competition because we know that that typically is a good thing. Competition only pushes prices down. It doesn't usually raise them up. And uh, on that happy note, I will thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. I hope we can have you back again soon. I would love to. It's great. It's a pleasure and I appreciate your work. Absolutely. Thank you, Amy. Again, this is Amy Bach from United Policyholders, and I'm Carl Sussman, host of Insurance Hour. Stay safe, and we'll talk again soon. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. 
I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. The show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.